Today we are dealing with the mathematical programming problem. That's non-linear programming problem with inequality constraints. And we will develop the necessary and sufficient condition for uh, handling the non-linear programming problem. For that thing, let us consider a general non-linear programming problem where n number of decision variables are there and m number of inequality constraints are there. Let us consider the problem minimize f x subject to g j x lesser than 0. There are m number of constraints that is why j will run from 1 to m and we are considering the x as a n dimensional vector belongs to R n and uh, for this we are considering the functions f x and g j x. These are all uh, non-linear in nature, not only that the functions are continuous. Now we will develop the necessary conditions that is why we will adopt the Lagrange multiplier technique once again and we will extend this Lagrange multiplier technique to Karush Kuntakar conditions. Just uh, let me tell the process for this, but the one thing is that for this nonlinear programming problem, the problem may have several, problem may have several minimum, but there are certain unique condition when the problem is having unique global optimum. That is why we will just de we will just first write down the inequality constraints to the equality constraints, then we will just uh, uh, formulate the Lagrange function and further we will go for the necessary conditions just we do for the classical optimization problems. Now if we just convert the non, if this problem is uh, number 1 then uh, we are uh, introducing m number of slack variables here to make this inequality equality. Slack variables, we get the equation in equations as the equations and we are considering the square of the slack variables to consider that uh, all the slack variables are positive. Then our problem is reduced to a general classical optimization problem with equality constraint that is minimize f x and subject to this number of equality constraints. Then we can formulate the Lagrange function after that. Where the Lagrange function is having n number of decision variables, m number of that is slag variables and m number of Lagrange multipliers. That is why L function will have 2m plus n number of variables x1, x2 up to xn, s1, s2 up to sm, lambda1, lambda2 up to lambda, lambda m. That is why 2m plus n number of variables are there and the formulation would be fx plus summation j is equal to 1 to m lambda j g j x plus s j square. Now here lambda j s are Lagrange multipliers. Now we will develop the necessary condition that is why we will go for the first order partial derivatives of L with respect to the variables 2m plus n number of variables that is why we will get a set of equations like this in the next. And these are the necessary condition for optimality.
since we are minimizing the objective function, that is why we will search for the local relative minima for this objective uh, for this Lagrange function. That is why del L by del x i equal to 0, which will reduce to del f by del x i plus summation j is equal to 1 to m lambda j del g j x by del x i equal to 0. And we will have n number of these equations like this, all right. Let me name it as 2. Another set of partial derivatives that is lambda j is equal to 0 and this will reduce to g j x plus s j square equal to 0 and we will have m number of equations like this. Similarly, if we just take the partial derivative with respect to j th slag variable and if we just equate to 0 that is another set of necessary conditions, then we will have 2 lambda j s j is equal to 0. Again we are having another m number of equations here. This set, set of equations are called the Karush Kuntakar conditions. These are the necessary conditions for obtaining relative or local minima for nonlinear given nonlinear problem. And this set of constraints are called Karush Kuntakar conditions. In short, we are saying it as a KKT conditions. And full form of KKT is that Karush, these, this is the name after three mathematicians. If we just look at the set of conditions, the first condition is the that is the number 2, this condition is the condition for optimality. The second condition, the set 3 reduces to g j x lesser than equal to 0, that is why this is the condition for the feasibility. There are m number of constraints like this. Now, if we just look at the third set of conditions that is the condition 4, we are getting here lambda j s j is equal to 0 and this set of equations are called as a complementary slackness property. As I mentioned, these are the ZJX, these are the feasibility conditions and these are the optimality conditions. And all together we call it as a Karush Kuntakar conditions or the KKT condition. These are very important for solving nonlinear programming problems. Even we are applying the KKT conditions for the linear programming as well for several with when we are dealing with the several constraints together for finding out the local for finding out the local optima we adopt the same process for nonlinear programming problem with uh, several inequality constraints now we will study further this karush kuntakar conditions and we will just uh, see what is happening here let, let us consent at the third condition that is lambda j x j is equal to 0. Now, if we see that if lambda j is equal to 0, then we are having s j not equal to 0. And if we are having lambda j not is equal to 0, we are having s j is equal to 0. What is the meaning of that? It means that 
if we are considering the case lambda g equal to 0, s j not equal to 0, that means the inequality constraints z j x g j x plus s j squared equal to 0, here these conditions are being satisfied with the lesser than sign. Now, in here I would like to mention that since we are looking for the relative minima, let us consider there is a point that is called x star which is local minima and this local minima is uh, satisfying at this local minima we are saying for the case 1 g j x j star plus s j square is equal to 0. This implies g j x lesser than equal to 0 that means these constraints are the inactive constraints. These constraints are not taking part for obtaining the optimal solution. That is why these are the inactive constraints. These constraint are, constraints are being satisfied with the lesser than sign. Now, let us consider for the second case. When lambda j not equal to 0, s j is equal to 0. In that case, we are getting that at the local minima for this case at the local minima g j x star is equal to 0. That means, these are the constraints which are active for optimality. In finding out the optimal solution this is very important to study with what are the constraints who are responsible for finding out the optimal solutions and the condition constraints which are not active for finding out the optimal solutions. We can we will see that from a set of inequalities few constraints are inactive constraints and few constraints are active constraints. And here one thing we will see that when lambda j not equal to 0, we will concentrate more on this case and we will see for the minimization problem, we can prove it further that for the minimization problem, always lambda j greater than 0 for the active constraints and for the inactive constraints lambda j equal to 0. That is why whatever I have said about the Karush kuntakar conditions or the KKT conditions, there are three sets of equations. One is the optimality conditions, one set is the feasibility conditions and another set is the complementary slackness property and along with that there will be another set of inequations would be there that would be lambda j greater few lambda j's will be greater than 0. And we will develop that study further with some geometrical interpretation. And that is why we are considering a smaller problem where number of variables are 2, number of decision variables are 2 and number of inequality constraints are 3 and we will study further what is happening and how we are achieving to the condition that lambda j is greater than 0 for the active constraints. That is why our study goes further with that. Let us consider that there are uh, one problem we are considering minimization of f x subject to there are three sets of constraints g 1 x lesser than equal to 0 g 2 x lesser than equal to 0 and g 3 x lesser than equal to 0. And we are considering that g 1 and g 2 are the active constraints we are assuming because uh, we will analyze the situation with proper graphical representation in the next. That means whatever optimal solution we will get that will lie on g1 and g2 both, but it will not lie on g3. Let us draw the picture further. Let us see. Let this is my g3, this is g1 and this is g2. Let me write down this is g1 equal to 0, g2 equal to 0 and this is g3 is equal to 0. And our problem is the minimization of f x. 
if we develop the Kuntakar conditions here, since there are two number of variables, we will get the first set that is the optimality conditions like this del f by del x i plus lambda 1, del g 1 by del x i plus lambda 2, del g 2 by del x i equal to 0. Here lambda 3 equal to 0 because we have assumed g 3 is the inactive constraints and we have just proved that for the inactive constraint lambdas will be the Lagrange multiplets would be always equal to 0. Now, in this situation say here is the optimal solution that is extra. Now, at this point if we consider the objective functions like this here the optimality attained that is a objective function would be like this. And we are looking for the minimization that is why we can say that the gradient of the objective function would be in this direction. That means at this point x star if I just move in this direction the objective functional value will increase. Since we are looking for the minimization problem that is why objective function is coming down from here this point and further and further and it is just touching the point x star and it cannot go further by because if I just leave this point then I will be out of the feasible region. That is why there are few things here to be studied that what is the gradient of the objective function at this point, what is the gradient of g 1 and what is the gradient of g 2 as well. That is why we are going to the next and here it is to mention that x i is equal to 1 and 2 because we have considered two number of decision variables only. If I just write down the entire two equations together then ultimately we are getting by considering both the equations together because we are having two equations here del f that is the gradient of f that is del f by del x i plus del f by del x del x 1 and del f by del x 2 the plus if we just add 2 we are getting del f plus lambda 1 del g 1 plus lambda 2 del g 2 is equal to 0 or we are getting minus grad f is equal to lambda 1 del g 1 plus lambda 2 del g 2. Here one thing should be seen that at point x star let us see what is del g 1, what is del g 2 and what is del f. At this point if I just draw the del g 1 that would be the normal to the plane g 1 is equal to 0 that is why this is my del g 1 alright. Now at point x star if we look for the del g 2 that is the gradient of the surface that is the curve g 2 is equal to 0 that would be normal at the at this point on the curve that is why this would be del g 2. What is further? If I see at x star this direction is the increasing objective function direction that is why this is delta f and the opposite direction would be minus delta f alright. Then what we see here? We see that at point x star if this is the optimal point this is the local optimal point for the minimization problem then we see that minus delta f lies within the cone spanned by delta g 1 and delta g 2. Graphically we could see here but this is algebraically also we can prove from this that minus lambda f is, is, is the linear combination of delta the grad of g 1 and grad of g 2 where we are considering the multiplets lambda 1 lambda 2 as weight of the linear combination. And we can study further to find out that lambda what is our objective to find out the lambda is lambda 1 is greater than 0 lambda 2 as well greater than 0 for minimization problem. That is why we will do further study from here what we will do we will again see the the feasibility direction and we will do some operation of this equation with that feasibility direction. Up to this we can conclude that 
the negative of the gradient of objective function lies within the cone of gradient of the active constraints. These are this is the conclusion for us. Now, we will multiply both side with feasibility direction. What is feasibility direction? I will just uh, detail further in the next. Then we get minus S t grad f is equal to lambda 1 S t grad g 1 plus lambda 2 S t grad g 2. What is S? Let me tell you in the next. Let me draw the figure once again that there are uh, G 1 and G 2 are the active, active constraints. This is the optimal solution that is why we are having the this is Z 1 equal to 0, this is Z 2 is equal to 0 and we are having this is grad G 2, this is grad of G 1 and this is the optimal point this direction is the grad of objective function just negative direction is the minus grad of f. Here I will study on the feasibility direction this is the feasible space for the previous problem that is a feasible direction from x star if this is x star for us that must be here this side graphically we can we can conclude, but we have to prove that fact that is why we are uh, doing certain we are learn we are learning certain definition. One is that x hat x, ta, x hat is the regular point that means any point within the feasible space if we consider the grad of g r g j s at x hat these are all linearly independent. Then only we can say that x hat is the regular point within the feasible space and we will say x hat is the feasible point if we consider a small increment if we just move x from x hat to the point another point x hat alpha s where alpha is very small amount and s is the direction and we are saying s is the feasible direction then we will see that g of x hat plus alpha hat is always lesser than 0 for all constraints and from here if I just expand this function with the TLS expansion from here we can conclude that S t grad g j x rather hat that is at the feasible point is always lesser than 0. Then if this is so, then we can say that S is the feasible direction. Now for uh, studying further what is feasible direction, let me take one example for uh, understanding better the what is the gradient direction of a function etcetera. Let us consider one small example f is equal to x1, x2 this is a function of two variables and we are uh, it is given that there is a point x naught that is 1 3 and we are just want to check whether the direction s that is given 1 1 
The question is whether this is a descent direction that means is that the function that f function is decreasing in this direction if I just move from x naught 1 3 2 in the direction of 1 1 or we will check whether s is a ascent direction. For proving that thing that means we are looking for gradient of f. Gradient of f means whatever functional the functional level surfaces we will get for f and grad of f are the normal directions of these level surfaces. That is why grad f can be calculated as del f by del x 1 that would be x 2 and del f by del x 2 that would be x 1. Then grad f at point x naught that is at point 1 3 would be is equal to 3 1 all right. Now, we want to check whether the direction s is the descent direction or not that is why we will go for s t grad f that means we will calculate 1 into 3 plus 1 into 1. What is s t grad f? This is nothing but the we are taking the dot product of the vector s with the grad f vector then it would be 1 into 3 plus 1 into 1 then it is coming as 4 it is greater than 0 which is the conclusion this is not the descent direction. This direction is rather the ascent direction for the function f when the function is x 1 x 2. If we can draw the graph then we can check easily for two variables, but if we just see for the three variables and more more number of variables this is the process to find out which direction is the descent direction for a given function and which direction is the ascent direction for the given function. And that is why if I just come back here what we are saying we are getting that st grad g j x less than 0. Then what is the conclusion here? We are concluding that the vector s and the grad g j s at optimal point are making obtuse angle. If I just see the graph here then this is the s direction all right and it is making the obtuse angle with grad g 1 and it is making the obtuse angle with grad g 2. But if f is the objective function for the minimization problem this is the direction minus delta f is my, my, my direction through which I will move that is why grad f would be the reverse to that direction and we are seeing here that s and delta f is making the acute angle that is why we will get s t grad f that is the is always greater than 0 because s and grad f making acute angle. All right. Then what we are concluding here? We are concluding that always the feasible the if s is the feasible direction for the minimization problem s t grad f greater than 0 and s t grad g j s would be less than 0 if g j s are the active constraints. And here one thing I just would like to mention that we can draw a feasible cone here and how to draw the feasible cone just see at this point delta the grad g 1 is this direction then then minus grad g 1 would be this direction. Grad that is why if I just draw the graph for draw the figure for s t grad g j then is lesser than 0 that is why s t minus grad g j would be greater than 0 that will correspond to this half space.
similarly if grad of g2 is this direction then grad of g1 would be this direction i am sorry grad of g2 is this direction minus grad of g2 would be this direction and if again if i just draw the half space here that is st grad minus minus grad g2 x then we will see this is the corresponding half space and intersections of these two half spaces that this is the direction for this, this is the feasible cone and always we will see that grad f will lie within this feasible cone at the kkt point that is x star. If you see that the, if we are getting any local minima where or rather any regular point where if we see at that point grad f does not lie within this feasible cone then we will say that that point is not the kkt point. That is why graphically we can say something about the feasible direction about the gradient of the objective functions, gradient of the constraints and as well we can say something about the intersections of the half spaces formed by the equations with the active constraints as the feasible cone. Now, if this is so, we are coming back to this equation once again. Then what we are we have just now we have achieved that for this equation we have just now have seen that S t grad g 1 is lesser than 0. S t grad g 2 is lesser than 0 because the feasible direction and gradient of the active constraints are making the obtuse angle. What else we got? We got S t grad f is greater than 0 because the feasible direction and gradient of objective functions forms the acute angle and if we just substitute the values here this is positive, this is negative, this is negative. Then we can conclude here only possibility is that lambda 1 must be greater than 0 lambda 2 must be greater than 0. These are the condition two conditions we will just include in our KKT conditions to get entire picture of the necessary conditions of the nonlinear programming with inequality constraints. Now, one thing once again I would like to mention that if we consider we have considered only the case where we are having three number of inequality constraints and two decision variables and we could see that for active constraints g1 and g2 lambda 1 greater than 0 and lambda 2 greater than 0 and for j3 since this is inactive lambda 3 equal to 0. But if you are having the minimization problem with the inequality sign where instead of the less than equal to we are having the greater than equal to sign the inequality constraint one thing should be mentioned that the corresponding Lagrange multiplier that means the constraint if the kth constraint is having greater than equal to sign then the corresponding Lagrange multiplier that is lambda k would be always lesser than 0 and here we can extend the number of decision variables further and uh, we will see that it will hold for all j's where for the active or inactive constraints always lambda j is non-negative for minimization problem involving lesser than equal to inequality constraint. And same thing we can prove for the maximization of problem as well. In, in the maximization problem if the inequality constraints are all of lesser than equal to type then the, the Lagrange multipliers would be non-positive that would be lambda j lesser than equal to 0 and we can prove it very easily that is why let me write down the KKT conditions 
in specific these are the necessary conditions for optimality. And we will apply these conditions for uh, obtaining the optimal point of some problems, non-linear programming problems further. Now, we are assuming that we are summarizing all the facts we have achieved till now. are all differentiable function. Here we are considering x as uh, x1, x2, xn. And we are considering the constraints as uh, lesser than equal to type minimization of fx subject to g j x lesser than equal to 0, then we will have the KKT conditions like this. First is the optimality conditions that would be del f by del x i plus summation j is equal to 1 to m lambda j g j x equal to 0, where lambda j's are the Lagrange multipliers, we will get the feasibility condition. There are n number of optimality conditions and feasibility conditions would be j j x lesser than equal to 0. There are m number of cons equations like this we are having complementary slackness property that would be lambda j d j x equal to 0. As we have seen that uh, we got previously lambda j s j is equal to 0. If we just multiply both side with s j then we are getting lambda j s j square equal to 0. S j square can be replaced with g j x that is why we are considering that g j x equal to 0 and there is another set of constraints that is the non-negativity of the Lagrange multipliers. These are the non-negativity constraints lambda j greater than equal to 0 and as we have proved for the active constraints for the corresponding lambda j should be greater than 0 for the inactive constraint lambda j equal to 0. If we will say x star is a KKT point, if it satisfies all our properties, And if we get any point x hat from the feasible space which is a regular point, if it does not satisfy all these conditions together then we cannot say that is the KKT point or the local or relative optima point. Now, we will look for the sufficient conditions. As I have mentioned again and again that KKT conditions are the necessary conditions, these are not the sufficient conditions. And as we have seen before for the classical optimization technique that for finding out the sufficient condition we need to find out the second order derivative of the function. That is why we will consider the function and we will if the function is twice differentiable then only we can check the sufficient condition of the function that is why we can mention that the sufficient condition for optimality k 
KKT conditions are the sufficient conditions if the objective function for the minimization problem rather we are going for the sufficient condition for the minimization problem. The same logic we can extend for the maximization problem as well. Once again I am repeating the KKT conditions are the sufficient conditions if f x is convex and the feasible space is convex. That means the functions involved in the constraints are all convex in nature. Rather we can say whatever optimal solution we are getting through the KKT conditions, we can declare it as a global optima if the objective function is convex as well as the constraints are convex. We can prove it very easily to see just now we have constructed the Lagrange function with the condition f x plus lambda j g j x j is equal to 1 to m. I should write g j x plus h j square. As we have seen in the KKT conditions that all delta lambda j is greater than equal to 0 and for the classical optimization technique we can say for an unconstant optimization problem L the function L is convex if del 2 L is positive definite I am sorry L is at point L we can get at point x star L is the L gives the sufficient L gives the if x star is the relative minima as we have learned in our classical optimization technique x star would be the global minima if del 2 L at x star is positive definite. Now since delta j's are all greater than 0 del 2 L would be positive definite only when f x is convex and g j's x are convex. Rather the KKT conditions are the sufficient conditions we can say if f x is convex and the feasible space is convex and this is uh, being named as the convex programming problem in optimization problem. The optimization problems are uh, which are named as the convex programming problem for the if we see for the minimization of that optimization problem if we see the objective function is convex and the associated constraints are convex then we will get the global optim global minima that is why the corresponding problem is being named as the convex programming problem. Similarly we can extend this logic the sufficient condition for the maximization problem as well. We will see that if x star is the local minima for local maxima for the corresponding maximization problem then it would be global maxima as well if we see that objective function f x is concave and the associated constraints that is the g j x rather the feasible space is convex and in other way we can say that KKT conditions are the sufficient conditions if f x is concave and feasible space is convex for the maximization problem. This is because of as we know for the maximization problem if we just construct the Lagrange function and for the unconstant optimization problem x star would be maximum value if del 2 L is negative definite. From that fact only as we know lambda j's are all lesser than equal to 0. From here we can conclude that del 2 L must be negative definite only when f x is convex and lambda that is the gj's gj x are all convex. Now the same let us see the KKT conditions for 
a general kind of nonlinear programming problem where we are having the inequality constraints as well as equality constraints together. That is why we are developing the necessary conditions for the general nonlinear programming problem. Let us consider a general nonlinear programming problem minimize f x subject to g j x lesser than equal to 0, where j is equal to 1 to m and another set of equality constraints are there h k x equal to 0 and k is equal to say 1 to l and we are considering x these are all positive and there are n number of decision variables. For this problem we can write down the we can say if x star is a regular point then x star is also a local minima of f if the following optimality, feasibility, complementary sadness and non-negativity constraints are satisfied. Let me write down all the conditions together first the optimality condition. that would be same as del f by del x i plus summation j is equal to 1 to m lambda j g j x sorry del of lambda d j x by del x i plus we are taking another set of Lagrange multipliers because once we will construct the Lagrange function we will have together m plus l number of Lagrange multipliers. That is why if I consider another set del k is running from 1 to l lambda k h k all right. Then the optimality number of optimality conditions would be 1 to n. Let me construct the Lagrange function then only it is understandable in a better way. The Lagrange function L would be is equal to f plus lambda j g j j is equal to 1 to m plus k is equal to 1 to l lambda k prime h k. If this is the Lagrange function by considering the first order derivative of L with respect to the decision variables we are getting the optimal solution and the feasibility conditions in the next. That would be g j x lesser than equal to 0. These are all the given conditions together h k equal to 0 where j is equal to 1 to m and k is equal to 1 to l. Complementary slackness property that would be lambda j g j x equal to 0 all right only for the inequality constraints and non-negativity constraints that would be lambda j these are all running from 1 to m lambda j must be greater than equal to 0 for j is equal to 1 to m there is one more condition that is lambda k primes k is from 1 to l r unrestricted in sign this could be positive this could be negative as well for equality constraints. Okay. That is all about the 
KKT conditions for nonlinear programming problem. Let us now apply for the numerical examples in the next. Let us consider the first numerical example with two variables. We are looking for the minimum minimum point for the function f x is equal to x 1 square minus 4 x 1 plus x 2 square minus 6 x 2 subject to a set of constraints x 1 plus x 2 lesser than equal to 3 minus x 1 2 x 1 plus x 2 lesser than equal to 2 x 1 x 2 greater than equal to 0. Now, for this problem we are looking for the relative minima and for that thing we will apply first the KKT conditions that are, these are the optimality, feasibility, complementary slackness and the non-negativity conditions and from there we will find out the relative minima. Now, let me explain the whole process. First let us construct the Lagrange function we need not to because we will go directly to the optimality conditions we have just deduced that would be del f by del x 1 we are considering first plus lambda 1 del g 1 by del x 1 plus lambda 2 there are two constraints I do not know which one is the active, which one is the inactive or both are active or not. Then if this is so, we are getting the condition 2 x 1 minus 4 plus lambda 1 minus 2 lambda 2 equal to 0. And similarly, if I consider the case for 2 as well this is i 2 as well we are getting the second condition 2 x 2 minus 6 that is from here 2 x 2 minus 6 and from here lambda 1 plus lambda 2 equal to 0. G 1 is the first constraint and G 2 is the second constraint and now we go for the next that is the feasibility condition. Feasibility conditions are x1 plus x2 lesser than equal to 3 minus 2x1 plus x2 lesser than equal to 2. Next, we will write down the complementary slack next condition. Slack next properties lambda 1 x1 plus x2 minus 3 is equal to 0, lambda 2 minus 2 x 1 plus x 2 minus 2 equal to 0. This is coming from the first constraint, this is coming from the second constraint. What else? We are having another two constraints that is a non-negativity constraints lambda 1 greater than equal to 0, lambda 2 greater than equal to 0. These are all together are called the KKT conditions. And from here we will find out the optimal solutions. Now, if it is C, I do not know which one is the active and which one is the inactive constraint. It is very difficult for us to find to draw the graph every time. Since this is the problem of two variables, we can try for the graph, but if this is a problem for the more number of more number of two or three or four number of variables, very difficult. That is why we should have a general process to find out the optimal solution and we are looking for that. Now, since lambda 1 greater than equal to 0, lambda 2 greater than equal to 0, we can have several cases. One case it could be both are 0, that means both are inactive constraints. The second case it would be lambda 1 not equal to 0, lambda 2 equal to 0. The third case it could be lambda 1 equal to 0, lambda 2 not equal to 0. The fourth case lambda 1 not equal to 0, lambda 2 not equal to 0. That means we are checking all the possible cases where both the constraints are inactive. When the second constraint is inactive, 
third case when the first constraint is inactive and the fourth case when both the constraints are active. Now we will see and at which case we are getting the optimal solution. Let us consider the first case that is case 1 lambda 1 equal to 0 lambda 2 equal to 0. What we get from this from these equations if lambda 1 0, lambda 2 0 from these two equations we are getting x 1 is equal to 2 and x 2 equal to 3. But what we see if I just put this value here the third condition x 1 equal to 2, x 2 equal to 3 it is violated that is why this cannot be the optimal point. Let us go for the second case, case 2, when lambda 1 e not equal to 0, lambda 2 equal to 0. Then if I just see lambda 1 not equal to 0, lambda 2 equal to 0, we are getting one equation 2x1 minus 4 plus lambda 1 equal to 0, another one 2x2 minus 6 plus lambda 1 equal to 0 and here also we are getting that if lambda 1 not equal to 0 then x1 plus x2 minus 3 must be equal to 0. That is why we are getting 3 equations and 3 unknowns very easily we can find out the values further. We are getting 2 x1 plus lambda 1 is equal to 4, another one is that 2 x2 plus lambda 1 is equal to 6 and another one plus la x1 plus x2 equal to 3. From these 3 equations we are getting the value for x1 equal to 2, x2 equal to no x1 plus x2 if I just uh, substitute here then if I substitute here we are getting the value for x1 as 1, x2 as 2 and lambda lambda 1 as 2 and if I just look here 1 2 this is being satisfied this is also satisfied minus 2 plus 2 these are all satisfied that is why we can see that 1 2 could be a KKT point. Rather, this is a KKT point. Let us see the third case, case 3. When we are considering lambda 1 equal to 0, lambda 2 not equal to 0, then we are getting 3 equations together. One equation is 2x1 minus 2 lambda 2 from the optimality condition, 2x2 plus lambda 2 is equal to 6, and from the third complementary slackness condition if lambda 2 not equal to 0 then minus 2 x 1 plus x 2 minus 2 must be equal to 0 that is why we are getting that equation 2 x 1 plus x 2 equal to 2. If I just put together what we get the values for 3 equations and 3 unknowns and we are getting x 1 equal to 4 by 6, x 2 is equal to 18 by 5 and lambda 2 is equal to we are getting minus 6 by 5, but this is not acceptable. Why? Because just now we have proved that for minimization problem always lambda i's would be non-negative, but here we are getting the negative value. That is why this point is not a KKT point, that is why we will go for the next case when lambda 1 not equal to 0 and lambda 2 not equal to 0. If both are not equal to 0, then from the complementary slackness conditions we are getting if both are not equal to 0, these must be equal to 0. That means both are the active constraints, both are being satisfied, both the constraints are being satisfied with the equality condition. And if we just solve these two problem, we are getting x1 equal to 1 by 3 x u equal to 8 by 3 and but we are getting lambda 2 is equal to minus 8 by 9. This is again negative, this is not accepted for to us. That is why we will declare that 
this is the solution for the problem this is our x star and in this way for a general nonlinear programming problem we can solve we can apply the KKT conditions and we, we can get the solution for this for the nonlinear programming problem. Let me write down one example for practice in the next. That uh, solve the following nonlinear programming problem. And this is a maximization problem. Same logic can be extended here. Maximize 7x1 square plus 6x1 plus 5x2 square subject to x1 plus 2x2 less than equal to 10, x1 minus 3x2 less than equal to 9 and x1, x2 greater than equal to 0. And uh, if we say solve it and since this is a maximization problem in forming the Kuntakar conditions we have to careful about the conditions for the Lagrange multipliers and accordingly we have to take decision about the optimal solutions. That is all about the KKT conditions. The KKT conditions are very useful for getting the optimal solution for the nonlinear programming problem. But KKT conditions are really the necessary conditions. These are all sufficient conditions as I said. If we just uh, can conclude anything about the convexity of the function f for the minimization and the concave of f in the maximization problem, but if the feasible spaces are convex in both the cases, then only we are get then only the optimal solutions for each one we are getting through KKT conditions are all the global optimal. These are this is the benefit. Uh, of the problem is the benefit, benefit of the solution process is that very easily we can get the optimal solution for a complicated nonlinear programming problem as well with the KKT conditions. But there is one disadvantage is that, that uh, if the functions are continuous differentiable twice differentiable then only we can go for the optimal solutions for with this process. But the another disadvantage is that ensuring the global optimality is very difficult because checking the convexity property or the concavity property of the objective function is very difficult in some complicated situations. And that is all about the nonlinear programming problem, solution process with inequality and equality constraints. Thank you.